Thank you, Lord. God bless you. We'd like to welcome you on the internet that are watching this service on your computer. We welcome you in the name of Jesus to this service today, and we pray right now that the Spirit of God, that the Holy Spirit, that knows no limits, there's no distance in prayer, there's no distance with God, there's, no, there's not even time with God. God's beyond time. Right now, whether you're watching this service today, whether you watch it a week from now, whether you watch it next month or next year, there's no time and no distance in prayer. And I know by my spirit right now that the Spirit of God wants to set people free. The Spirit of God wants to touch you right where you're at. Wants to save you. As a matter of fact, I'm speaking to a minister right now. He used to be involved in the, in the things of God. He used to preach the Word of God. And you're watching me right now. And you're wearing, you're wearing a t-shirt and you're wearing blue jeans. I see you in the spirit right now. And you, you feel like you've filled God to the place where you, you've lost all hope. Even your friends have been used of the adversary to make you feel like God can never use you again. I'm speaking to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The love of God knows no limits. And if you won't give up on God, He'll never give up on you. And I'm telling you by the Spirit of the living God, get up. Pick up your Bible. Get back in the army of God. God still loves you. God still wants you. God still will use you to His glory. It's not about you anyway. Shake off what people have said to you, sir. Shake off what your own relatives have said to you. Get up in the name of Jesus and get back in the fight. The time is short. The return's at hand. God needs all of His warriors. Receive the forgiveness of God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I'm talking to you. God's talking to you. You know it. You know who you are. Receive God's restoration in the name of Jesus. Take it off and go on with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been doing an, an in-depth teaching on forget, forgetting the, the, the past and going on with the future that God has for you. We've looked in the last few weeks how the number one weapon of the adversary, the number one weapon of hell, is to keep you from understanding and knowing the Word of God. Amen? Amen? The number two weapon that Satan will constantly use against the child of God, against somebody who wants to serve the Lord, is guilt, condemnation, and using that guilt and condemnation to constantly get you to look back at your faults, look back at your failures, look back at your defeats, and keep you frozen in the past and never going on with God. We looked in the past teachings how God spoke to Lot in the book of Genesis. And he called and sent two angels to Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. Can I hear an amen? God was getting ready to rain judgment down on Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because of their gross sins. Because of their gross sins. And let me tell you something, folks. God is love. And we are in the dispensation of grace. If we, if we make a mistake, God doesn't immediately call for us to be stoned to death for our transgressions. We're under grace now. Where we can call out to God, ask Him to forgive us. And according to 1 John, it says, He's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins every time we ask for forgiveness. Now that's the key word right there. Every time we ask for forgiveness. If you go la, 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 la through your life with no conviction and no, no twinge of guilt in your heart for the transgressions and sins that you committed, you're going to stay bound in those sins. There is no forgiveness until you ask. Don't misinterpret grace as license to live any way you want. That's not 
not what we're preaching. That's not what the Bible says. But the good news is this. When we fail, when we fall, somebody raise their hand and say, thank you, God. Just, just raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Listen to this. When we fail and when we fall, and we will, and anybody that tells you so, they're so holy they never had an evil thought, they're so holy they never, it never entered their mind to lust or, or think ugly or, or cuss in their mind, they're liars and they're guilty of the law right there. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm probably one of the few preachers you're ever going to meet that's going to tell you the truth to the best of my ability because I don't care if you ever send me any money. I don't care if you come to my church. I care that you serve God. I care that you let God be wonderful in your life. And to do that, you need to know the truth. Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth that you know. Not the truth that I know. Not the truth that Brother Gary knows. The truth you know sets you free. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I can be free. I can walk in hell. I can walk in prosperity. I can walk in the power of God. I can preach the gospel. Believe me in the same Bible you got on your lap. But if you don't know what it says, and you don't believe it, you'll stay sick, you'll stay bound, you'll stay depressed, and your life will never change. It's not what I know that sets you free. It's what you know, you believe, that sets you free. Yes, amen. So the number one trick of hell is to keep you ignorant of the Word of God. The number two trick of hell is to tell you when you do fail that God's finished with you. And it's all over. The number three trick of hell is that if you keep going on with God, you never fully are released to believe again because you're constantly drawn to the past failures, the past pitfalls, the past problems that you've experienced in your walk of faith. We've looked over the last couple of weeks that, that God told, told uh, Lot and his wife and his family, get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Get up and run for your life. Listen to me. Look at somebody say, number one, you've got to repent. Number two, you've got to avoid. You really need to lock that in your mind or make notes of that if you're out there watching this on the internet. Never forget those two principles. You have to repent. Until you repent, there's no forgiveness of sins. We've all fallen. We've all failed. I'm the chiefest of sinners. But I repent. There's times I repent seven, eight, nine, ten times a day. You're a preacher? Yes. And probably all the other preachers I know repent the same amount. The honest brothers and sisters that I've served with will admit that openly. The ones that tell you that you can get so holy it just never occurs to you, they're misleading you, child of God. Can I hear an amen? amen. Can, I, can you say it like the Pentecostal? Amen. amen. Now listen, you've got to repent. Repent is to say, Father, I'm sorry, I know what I did was wrong. Please forgive me. And you don't have to cut your wrist. You don't have to fast for ten days. You don't, you don't have to wail and holler, but you have to really mean it in your heart. Once you mean it in your heart, and open your mouth, and come to Him, and confess what He already knew anyway, then it says that He's faithful and just to forgive you of all your sin. He'll never say, no, get out of here. He'll never reject you. He'll never reject you. But he'll never accept you until you repent. Did you hear me? Amen. So there's no playing games with God. He's God. I'm his creation. And it's on his turn. Listen to me. God is not Burger King. You don't tell God, hold the pickles, hold the lettuce. You don't tell God, hold the prayer, hold the confession. You don't tell God how you're going to serve Him. God very plainly put it in print, put it in writing, put it in the Holy Spirit, put it through holy men and women of God to tell you very clearly what He expects, not what He suggests, and not what He's going to negotiate about. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Number one, repent. Number two, flee. What do you mean by that, Brother T.C.? I mean exactly what I said. God was getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. 